Hey guys, it's Kentucky Ample Man coming at you today on an absolutely beautiful Friday evening. Pretty hot out here today. Uh, I think it's in the high 80s or low 90s here in Kentucky today. Uh, I know it's been a couple weeks since uh, since I got a video out to y'all. I'm sorry about that. I've, I've been a little busy and honestly that's been the last thing on my mind but I'm back so let's talk a little bit uh, as y'all know the current situation in the country uh, you know with the whole coronavirus pandemic wrapping up uh, everybody that had to leave work you know started drawing unemployment from the government and now there is a hiring crisis uh, you may have been noticing it around where you guys live at in the US here uh, restaurants gas stations various other places are having to either close down completely or close down on certain days because they can't get people to work because they make more sitting at the house drawing unemployment now that being said you know I can't blame these people for sitting at the house and drawing unemployment if they're going to make more than what they would at a job like flipping burgers or you know making sandwiches or what have you you know if they're making more doing unemployment then by all means do it but I think that needs to you know the government needs to slack off and let these people get out and get a job you know I mean we, we need it guys we need it need people to work at these places you know and who can blame them for not wanting to if they're making more drawing unemployment and doing a side gig or whatever you know if, if I was in that position then hell yeah I'd, I'd keep drawing unemployment I wouldn't go back to work and make three or four hundred dollars less a week that's stupid but you know hopefully that'll get straightened out sooner or later but that leads me into my next point with the situation the way it is right now and all these places needing employees and giving you know I've seen places giving sign on bonuses or what have you you know just just so people will come and work for them and that's crazy you know I mean the people that are already working you know the place most places that they're working at are still treating them the same way as before you know they're, they're not appreciating these employees that have stuck by them and decided they're going to stay while you know when they could go and draw unemployment and make more you know they're staying at these companies because of some you know one reason or the other but these employers are still treating them like dirt so it seems to me, you know, if I was the owner of a business right now, I would be treating my employees like they are gold. Because they essentially are gold, you know. You can't run your business without them. You know, give them, give them bonuses. Give them uh, paid days off, personal time, whatever, you know. Get, show them that you care, that you want them there. You know, don't don't lead into stuff like uh, like you've always done you know I mean I, I've seen it all the time in the past and still today you know still even in the higher level jobs favoritism nepotism it's rampant guys y you know some employers some businesses instead of promoting that employee that has been loyal and given everything that they've got you know pretty much given their heart and soul to that job instead of promoting them or letting them at least try you know in a management role or a higher position or whatever they'll just hire their cousin their brother their nephew whatever that has no experience whatsoever or quite honestly just does not deserve to be in that position 
You know, I mean, these employers need to learn that you have to treat these people right. That you can't just step all over them and let that be that and expect them to stay and give the same level of dedication, I guess you could call it, as they did before. You know, I mean, it's happened to me. It's happened quite recently, honestly. I mean, you know, not within the last little bit, but it has happened to me. You know, I've been passed over several times for a promotion when I knew that I was most qualified for that spot. You know, I knew that I had the qualifications and the uh, the drive, I guess you could call it, to do that job, and I've been passed over. And the job be given to a friend or a relative or a son or a nephew or something like that, that just quite honestly does not deserve to be in that position. You, you know, day one they come in and they're boss. And here you have somebody like me that's given everything they have, you know, come in early, stay late, volunteer, uh, you know, done extra things just to help the company out, just to help them run a little bit smoother. And they, they go and put a friend of the boss, you know, the, boss, the main boss will put a friend of his in a position under him in a management position and pretty much say you know well screw those screw those guys that's been here forever they, they can they, they've been here forever they ain't gonna mind they're they ain't got nowhere they can go well you know that's not always true you know i mean and i had this discussion with a friend of mine not too long ago you know yeah i'm just an emt in kentucky you know, I, I'm almost the base level in emergency response and uh, ambulance personnel. That is very true. But, you know, I went to paramedic class. I passed paramedic class. And the only reason that I'm not a paramedic is because I didn't do my ride time. You know, I, I was young. I was stupid. I had other things come up. And I didn't finish it out. Okay, that's my fault but I'm actually pretty content with being an EMT. It's fun. I like my job. But you know, I've got 20 years, 20 years of experience. If you can name it, I've probably done it or seen it or been there when it happened, okay? And I have been in management roles before and I've done pretty good, I think. You know, everybody that was over me said I did pretty good. You know, my first management position was making sure that, uh, oh Lord, it's been years ago, it was making sure that uh, all the runs got sent out when they needed to be sent out and all the trucks was good. And, you know, if there was a problem, I had to either handle it or get a hold of the person above me and let them handle it. You know, it was one of those chain of command, I guess you could call it, type deals. And everybody said that I did excellent in that position. You know, other management roles, people said that I did absolutely wonderful. You know, whether I've stepped down from them or I've been terminated from the job or whatever, you know, my management skills was never, never the issue with any of it. So I'm trying to wrap my head around why I would have been passed up for a promotion when, you know, if I wasn't the best choice, you know, if my qualifications weren't as good as the other guy, let, let's just say, you know, in an imaginary situation, if I was applying for, say, county supervisor of the ambulance service, okay, you know, the, the captain, I guess you could call it. You know, if my skills and my qualifications were not up to par with the other applicants, then I could totally and completely understand why I would be passed over. And I would be fine with that. You know, that, that would drive me to either get more, you know, better qualified, more qualifications under my belt, or to do better and give more. 
but when you don't have a reason that you're passed over you know you ask and they don't tell you or they just blow you off or whatever you know it, it, it gets a little irritating <laughs> i mean just straight up simple fact it gets a little irritating and when that happens to an employee you know especially me you know they, they're the position i'm talking about is not with this current place that i'm at it, it's a totally different thing but you know i gave my heart and soul to that job i would come in late or come in early stay late i volunteered i came in on my days off i did everything that was expected you know any anything that could help that company i did it and i didn't expect anything in return you know, I didn't ever get a pay raise. I didn't ever get a, well, I, very rarely did I get a thank you. Maybe two or three times. But, you know, everything I did, I did because I wanted the company to be better. I wasn't doing it for myself. I wasn't doing it for anything. You know, I just wanted the company to benefit. And when I got passed over, not once, not twice, but three times, for a promotion I got a little irritated you know I, I got downright well not a little irritated I got downright pissed so I went and asked you know why am I being passed over is is it an education thing or what and I was actually told by the boss oh no it's not an education thing it's not a nothing it, it, it's just that this boy is a friend of mine he needed the job okay well that's fine and dandy you know just give him a job but good god why did you put him in management you know when you've got several employees you know fighting for that position wanting that position it's not right it's not fair and after i was told that I started looking for a job that day. You know, I started looking for another place to work that day. And when I gave my two-week notice, they were completely shocked and surprised. They had no idea why I would do that. And, you know, in the meantime, before I gave that two-week notice, I quit doing anything that wasn't in my job description. You know, if... If the trash needed to be took out and that wasn't in my job description, oh well, I didn't do it. Somebody that has the job description as, you know, trash disposal or whatever can do that. You know, I didn't come in early no more. I showed up right on time. I didn't stay late. I left on time. I didn't socialize. I didn't hang around. I didn't do nothing like that. I just withdrew completely. And it may not have been the right thing to do or the best thing to do you know looking back i don't think it was but that's how you know that's how most people are when they feel they've been wrong they just say you know what screw it i'll just do the least that i have to to get by and draw my paycheck and stay out of trouble and piss on it you know screw that company because the way that they feel and for the majority of it it's true if you drop dead on that job today they'll have you replaced in an hour and you'll be forgot about is it right no is it fair not really but it happens you know nepotism is rampant in jobs in promotions management whatever you know it, it's absolutely rampant and it's wrong it shouldn't be happening favoritism you know doing something for one employee and not doing the same thing for another that's wrong you know, and it still happens every time you turn around it's happening you, know, you can see it. it you may not even have to really pay attention and see it and then again you may have to try you know make an effort to notice that it's happening but it does happen and i say it happens at every single employment every single job in this country it happens at 
And, you know, I just think that employers need to take a step back and think for a minute, you know, Billy Bob, just say for example, Billy Bob's been with Joe Blow Ambulance Service for 10 years. He's gotten one ride up in that 10 years. He comes in early, comes in and covers shifts whenever he's asked. He stays late. He does everything in the world. You know, anything that's asked of him, he does. Well, a management position comes open. Billy Bob applies for it. Billy Bob gets shot down because upper management decides that their cousin needs a job or their friend needs a job. How do you think that's gonna make Billy Bob feel after being there for 10 years, never asking for nothing, giving everything he's got, you know, wanting to better himself and he gets shot down. You know, the best quote I ever heard, and I can't remember who it came from right offhand. Uh, I'll try to put it on the screen when I find out. But the best quote I have ever heard, train your employees good enough so that they can leave your company. Or train your employees good enough so they can leave. But treat them in such a manner that they don't want to. That's a good bit of advice, guys, right there. That, that is an excellent piece of advice. Because, yeah. But back to what I was saying, you know, when I gave my two-week notice, the main head owner of the company was like, why? You know, wh why would you do this? I thought you was happy. You know, we, we've tried to accommodate you and everything. You, you really give everything you've got to us. Why would you quit? You know, why would you just go to another job making a dollar less on the hour. And when I told him that it was because I felt, you know, like I had been passed over three times for a promotion when I knew that my credentials and my qualifications were sufficient, if not outstanding, just to see that position given to somebody that was a relative or a friend or whatever of upper management or the ball, you know, the ownership or whatever, when I told him that, he was completely shocked. Well, we don't do that. Well, yeah, you do. And when I showed him examples, you know, told him examples and everything, he was like, oh my God, we do do that. So, you know, he tried to make it right, which I can, I, I commend them for that. You know, they did try to make it right and I did end up staying. But, you know, I, I told them at that time, I said, don't expect anything extra from me. I'll do my job description. I'll stay out of trouble. But if I'm not getting a pay bump and I'm not getting promoted, I'm not doing nothing extra. And when that company shut down, I had worked my way up to a decent position because I had made that known. Because I had let that straw break the camel's back, you know? But yeah, I mean, it, it's just rampant in the work. You know, nepotism and favoritism, it's crazy how, how bad it is. And, you know, there's rules and laws against it, but it's like it don't matter. You know, they can always skirt the law somehow. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I've got to say today. I'm gonna head home and spend some time with the missus. Maybe work out in the forge a little bit. I might film some of that and do a video in the forge with y'all. But until next time, y'all keep the dirty side down. Be kind to each other and God bless. We'll see y'all next time.